apart from the fact that correlated equilibrium models certain uh, situations certain real world situations much better than mixed strategy nash equilibrium as we have discussed in the case of uh, uh, the friends two friends uh, watching a football or soccer game um, or uh, in, in the case of traffic signal game uh, correlated equilibrium also had another advantage which is in its computational tractability we have uh, we saw that uh, mixed strategy nash equilibrium is difficult to solve uh, and in particular that is a hard problem uh, uh, computationally hard problem but uh, that does not apply to correlated equilibrium so let us look at what are the set of inequalities uh, uh, and equalities we need to solve we need to satisfy in order to make a, a, a correlated strategy to be a correlated equilibrium so this is this condition one that we have written here is directly coming from the uh, the first principles so we have just written down the definition of correlated equilibrium and this inequality is uh, is satisfied for all every si and si prime and for all players i in n and the second set of inequalities is just the the feasibility that uh, these are valid probability distributions so uh, each of these numbers uh, pi of s should be non negative and they should sum to 1 so now notice that uh, instead of uh, the the uh, the variables being individual probability masses uh, of over all the strategies of a specific player this is now uh, the uh, the correlated strategy is a probability distribution over strategy profile so therefore the optimization variables here is uh, just pi of s so which is which is appearing on on this side here and also here uh, so contrast this with the similar expression which we had for uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium there we had sigma 1 s1 multiplied by sigma 2 s2 and so on so that was actually giving rise to a, a, a product form of these variables which is a non-linear optimization problem and that was not very easy to solve while here uh, all the uh, inequalities are actually linear uh, inequalities and that is giving so that that makes the uh, problem of finding correlated equilibrium a linear program so now let us look at how many uh, inequalities that we are uh, trying to solve uh, so just uh, comparing the the number of inequalities we can get one idea that uh, how easy it is to solve of course uh, we are not uh, considering this nonlinear uh, optimization problem in in the case of uh, in the case of nash equilibrium uh, we are going to compare this just from the counting the number of uh, number of inequalities that we need to solve so here we have uh, because this inequality here has to be satisfied for all si si prime so there uh, so there will be m square uh, number of inequalities if we assume the cardinality of uh, uh, each of these players cardinality of the uh, strategies sets of each of these players to be equal to m then there should be m square such inequalities for every player so therefore together there will be order of n m square number of inequalities this uh, the second inequality in the second condition uh, where we have the non-negativity constraint this number becomes a little larger because there are uh, m to the power n number of uh, possible strategy profiles in this case so therefore this actually increases uh, accordingly and the final one is just one now this inequalities together uh, represent the feasibility LP. So even in the case of uh, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we solved a feasibility LP uh, where we have written down the conditions for becoming a, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And uh, feasibility LP uh, just means that uh, the objective function is a constant. So you don't really care about the objective function. You just care about uh, solving this uh, inequalities. So solving this uh, feasibility LP will give you one correlated equilibrium in this case. So let us now contrast uh, that how many number of uh, uh, cases inequalities that uh, it is being it is solving in the case of C and vis-a-vis uh, -vis with the MSNE. So in MSNE, the total number of support profile itself was two to the power m times n. So if you remember, we defined a uh, number called k, which was uh, uh, exhaustively listing all possible uh, supports. And there were uh, 2 to the power cardinality of si 
minus one number of uh, supports in uh, for every every player and we have taken the product over all players so since this uh, cardinality is equal to n and you are multiplying all this uh, in uh, over n players this becomes uh, 2 to the power m times n so this many number of support profiles you have and for each of those support profiles we are going to solve uh, one feasibility program which is a non-linear uh, feasibility program so not considering that fact still you have a lot of uh, a search uh, a lot of support profiles to search over so uh, in the case of uh, uh, correlated equilibrium we have uh, only the order of m to the power n that is the only bottleneck uh, because uh, if you look at this this is much smaller uh, this uh, number of how many number of uh, inequalities we are handling you know, for the case of uh, uh, for satisfying this condition one uh, the the only bottleneck is in the second part so even if we look at these two numbers order of 2 to the power mn and order of two to, uh, uh, order of m to the power n we can see that this is uh, actually exponentially smaller because if you look at the log uh, of these two numbers uh, the log of this will give you mn while log of this will give you uh, n times log of m and even though the the first term is same here uh, the second term is exponentially smaller in the case of correlated equilibrium so correlated equilibrium not only gives you less number of uh, inequalities it is also giving uh, each of this uh, uh, inequalities are actually linear inequality so it is much easier to solve on top of that you can also look at some of the optimization objectives because we have seen that there exists uh, multiple uh, correlated equilibrium uh, for instance in the case of uh, the traffic signal game we have seen that there are multiple correlated equilibrium uh, for a football or cricket game also there are multiple correlated equilibrium now the question comes which uh, correlated equilibrium uh, should we choose and that can be resolved by solving the same feasibility program uh, with a with an objective function so now it's a full-fledged uh, linear program with a, a properly defined objective function uh, on the in the constraint set we have all the constraints for uh, uh, becoming this uh, correlated equilibrium so all these constraints that are written here but I we might be interested in uh, for instance finding that correlated equilibrium which maximizes the sum of the utilities of all these players so that could be one feasible objective and that gives rise to uh, different kind of uh, different kind of objectives gives rise to different correlated equilibrium now we have uh, defined a new equilibrium concept in in correlated equilibrium it is a little different from the uh, the previous uh, concepts uh, that we have discussed because all of those were uh, strictly looking at the agent uh, level view and uh, not cooperating with each other but uh, the correlated equilibrium is in some sense uh, not cooperating directly but uh, via mediator so it is a correlated equilibrium that's why the name also says that it is coordinating with the multiple players and taking that decision so how does it compare with the how does it uh, connect uh, this equilibrium uh, with the uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium concept we can actually show that for every mixed strategy Nash equilibrium sigma star there exists a correlated equilibrium pi star and the construction of that pi star so uh, what does this mean that we can find a correlated equilibrium for every game where there exists a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and the construction is uh, really simple you just take the product of all this uh, sigma sigma i stars so we had the so let's say we have a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium profile sigma 1 star sigma 2 star and so on to sigma n star uh, all that we are doing is uh, to define the pi let's say pi star uh, correlated equilibrium of s uh, we are just uh, taking the corresponding product so sigma 1 star of s1 that is the probability mass that you are associating uh, with that strategy of player 1 uh, times uh, sigma 2 star of s2 similarly sigma n star uh, sn so this uh, particular structure of uh, the uh, correlated strategy uh, is claimed to be a correlated equilibrium as well 
and I leave that as an exercise. It's not very difficult. All that uh, uh, you can use, you need to use, uh, here is a hint, you'll have to use the MSNE characterization result. The characterization result which says that um, for all the uh, uh, for all the strategies on the support of, uh, of a mixed strategy, uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, uh, your utility should be same, expected utility should be same and that should be greater than or equal to all the strategies, uh, the expected utilities in at all the strategies which is outside that support. Uh, in fact, you can write the inequality for all the uh, uh, strategies and that, and that is in S, SI. So this, using this fact that uh, you are using this uh, MSNE characterization and using this uh, uh, substitution for uh, pi i star, you can show that pi star, pi star is essentially a correlated equilibrium. So that theorem essentially gives us this uh, bigger picture. So we have already seen that uh, strongly dominant strategy equilibrium is also a weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. Weakly dominant strategy equilibrium is also P PSNE. PSNE is uh, uh, definitely a special case of an MSNE. Now we have also shown that MSNE for every game that has an MSNE, uh, you can always construct the correlated equilibrium. So therefore this uh, structure, uh, so this is the space of games which admits an SDAC, this is the space of games which admit an SDA, uh, WDAC and so on and this set uh, keeps on increasing in this way. So uh, the largest uh, set is this correlated equilibrium, it's the most relaxed uh, equilibrium concept and therefore the, the set of uh, games that has a correlated equilibrium is the largest. So let us uh, make our uh, short summary so far. Uh, we have uh, so far discussed only normal form games um, and uh, we have uh, looked at the definitions like rationality, intelligence, common knowledge and we have discussed with examples. Uh, uh, we have distinguished between what is a strategy and what is an action looking at cer certain kinds of games. Uh, we have looked at dominance which were strict and weak and the corresponding equilibria concepts were defined as a strongly dominant strategy equilibrium and weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. Um, then we went to the definition of uh, unilateral deviation. So if one player unilaterally deviates and does not get better off, then we call those, those strategy profiles as uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Its generalized version is a uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and its existence is guaranteed. Then we also looked at the characterization result of MSNE, uh, but the computing side we have seen that it is, it is hard to compute. Then we went to this uh, uh, scenario where we uh, use the trusted mediator and go to correlated strategies and there we also defined a correlated equilibrium.